Welcome to the very first Wouldn't It Be Grand Offcuts videos. One of those short videos that you keep lying around because you're just not sure when it's going to become useful or handy to someone down the track. Over the next few months, I've got a stack of projects that require me to cut a range of different sized circles out of wood. Now you can use a router or a table saw to make plenty of different sized circles, but most of the jigs for these two tools require a centre hole in your piece for either the piece or the tool to pivot around to get you the perfect circle. Now I want to make circles without this hole, so in this video I'll show you the jig I made to make this easy. Now this is my circle cutting jig and this is also my entry into the Wood Jigs 21 Challenge by James at Fix It Fingers. Once you finish watching this video, go and check out all the other amazing entries and thanks again to James from Fix It Fingers for putting on such an amazing competition. First I'll show you how this jig works. I like to call this the donut and the donut gets stuck to the centre of your piece using double sided stick tape. This is the puck and the puck can be set to the size of the circle you want and locked into place by screwing it down. Then you take your workpiece with the donut attached, put it over the puck and slide the jig into the bandsaw blade until you're fully activated. Then rotate your piece until you've got your perfect circle. I set this puck for a 400mm diameter and you can see here this is exactly what I ended up with. Then when you finish your cut, remove the donut and you're left with a clean, hole free workpiece. To make this jig, I started by cutting a piece of 18mm or 3 quarter inch ply uh, to the same length as the obligatory Wood Jigs 21 form ply, 17mm in this case. Then I cut the form ply down into two roughly equal pieces for the left and the right side of the jig. A piece of scrap hardwood gets cut down here to the same size as the T-slot on the bandsaw table and this helps to align the jig with the blade. Using wood glue and screws, I attach the runner to the underside of the jig base. Because this jig is quite long and because my bandsaw table is quite small, I'm using micro jig clamps to attach the jig to the table and hold it securely in place while I'm cutting. And a Japanese pull saw to remove the excess from the runner. These clamps are perfect for this type of jig, they slide into the dovetail groove, clamp down on the underside of the bandsaw table and leave the top free from obstruction. Adding a piece of scrap wood here as a stop block means that the blade will always cut in exactly the same position. I use a hole saw here to cut the puck and this is 63 mils or 2.5 inch and it's slightly larger than the hole I intend to use in the donut which is 61 mils or 2 and 27 64ths of an inch. With the help of a belt sander and a cordless drill I can sand down the puck until it fits perfectly inside the hole. GET IN THE HOLE! It's crucial that the track that the puck runs on is perpendicular to the front of the blade, so I'm using a square here and one of the side pieces to line up and use as a guide for the router to cut this groove. Initially I used a dovetail groove and a bolt to attach the puck, but this wasn't accurate enough for me and you'll see what I did later to change that. Time to create the donut, so starting with a 61mm hole in a piece of form ply, I then take that, put it over the puck and go for my initial cut. After the first pass, I realised the donut was a little too large, so I adjusted the puck and recut and got to the final size. The final diameter of the donut ended up being about 130mm or around 5 inches. Discovering very quickly that form ply and wood glue don't really go very well together, I clamped the side pieces where I wanted them, flipped them over and screwed them into place. This is where I discovered the bolt and groove method wasn't very accurate and decided to swap it up with some T-track I had lying around. The bonus here is that when I used the palm router to cut the groove for the T-track, using the side pieces as a router guide centered the bit perfectly, meaning the T-track is perfectly centered to the front of the bandsaw blade. Off camera, I tap some screws in to hold the T-track in place. Trimming an off-cut piece to size 
covered up all my imperfections at the end of the jig and stop the puck and donut from going too close to the blade. After using the Forstner bit to cut a recess for the locking nut on the puck, I oiled up the bolt to use it as a guide to make sure that the locking nut was central to the puck and then epoxied it in place. This oil just stopped the bolt and the nut from getting stuck together and I was able to remove the bolt once the epoxy had started setting. Off camera I trimmed the bolt down to the same size as the puck height and you can see here the T-Trek option is way better than the dovetail and bolt option. First thing to do was to make a new cut in the form ply directly above the existing cut in the plywood base. Then it was time to test it out. This is the same cut that you saw at the start of the video. We're going at 400 mils. This should be a 40. Exactly. Now I just needed to use the jig to make a variety of different sized circles and I could mark the puck at each location for these circles and then reverse engineer it to work out a scale. Every five millimeter marking on the jig equates to 10 millimeters overall on your final piece. That's because the puck measures radius and a smart teacher of mine once told me that two times the radius equals the diameter. And finally, I did do some tests where I set the puck to markings that I'd marked and the results were very accurate. So I'm really, really happy with the way this turned out. And that is my bandsaw circle cutting jig. If you want to see how I use it in some upcoming projects, Hit the subscribe button below, hit the notification bell, and you'll be notified whenever a new video comes out. And if you want more jig making inspiration, have a look at the hashtag WoodJigs21 playlist. I'll leave a link down below and go and get some inspiration from all the other great creators. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Hey.